Endless cars of vitally needed coal are stalled by the Russian blockade of Berlin. But that is only part of the story. As the red noose is drawn closer about the western sector of the capital, switches are pulled on generators, and the fuel famine forces drastic power cuts. Berlin becomes a city of darkness, as all ground communication is severed and industry comes to a standstill. But the Western Allies fight back with an airlift of 450 flights daily, carrying thousands of tons of food into the beleaguered capital, flying an air corridor threatened by red fighter planes. Backing up the shuttle are 60 B-29s, which arrive at an airfield in England, a base from which American planes once bombed Germany. Now these Yanks may fly on a mission of mercy, the feeding of hungry Germans in Berlin. These are the men whose nerve-wracking job it may be to fight their way through weather and red obstruction. So grave is the crisis that General Clay is recalled to Washington to report on the situation. He is greeted by Secretary of the Army Royal and then is welcomed by Chief of Staff Omar Bradley. On his shoulders may rest the responsibility for peace or war and the Commander-in-Chief at the White House awaits his appraisal of the most explosive situation yet in the struggle between East and West. In the nation's capital, the draft is very much back in the news, and back with it, General Lewis B. Hershey, its former wartime boss. To newsmen, General Hershey explains the regulations of the new draft set up which will bring our armed forces up to authorized strength. The Congress has taken note of the fact that enough men could not be procured by voluntary means to fill the armed forces and pass the Selective Service Law. To carry that out, a registration has been called for the starting on the 30th day of August. All men between 18 and 25 will be required to register. I repeat, all men. This includes veterans as well as members of the National Guard and the Organized Reserve of the Army, the Navy, the Marine Corps, and the Coast Guard. In conclusion, I want to again repeat that everyone must register. You may go to any local board anywhere, but be sure and remember to give your place of residence because that will be the place to which your card will be sent. Following a year of investigation, Twelve top communists in this country are rounded up. Eugene Dennis, William Foster are among those arrested with Benjamin Davis in New York, accused of advocating the violent overthrow of the U.S. John Williamson, Henry Winston, and Jack Steckel are also members of the Red Hierarchy, indicted by a federal grand jury and held on bail pending trial. Communists and their sympathizers are screaming foul. That is their right, as is a fair trial the very rights they allegedly want to overthrow protect them now as Americans. At the port of Izmir, four American submarines are officially turned over to the Turkish Navy. All veterans of Pacific fighting, the craft are gifts from America. Turkish sailors come aboard to take over after the transatlantic voyage. The subs will strengthen the Turkish fleet uneasily eyeing Russia. In the final act of transfer, the stars and stripes come down a flag that scourged the Jap fleet in the Pacific. The Turkish standard is raised. Turkey, steadfast in the face of threats to the Dardanelles, retains her position in the family of free nations against all pressure. American aid bolsters Turkey, and it comes in a moment of unrest in the Middle East as well as throughout Europe. <laughs> 